and we're back with my fellow geek, Lisa Carney. Hello, Lisa. Hello, geek. Hello, fellow geek. <laughs> <laughs> so Lisa and I are both physiotherapists. I'm a breathing physiotherapist, breathing coach as well as a physio. And Lisa, you are more all about what's happening down below. You're a... Fanny physio. <laughs> yeah. I got called that the other day for the first time. I was like, oh, okay, I'll take that. <laughs> I'm a pelvic, pelvic health physio. Yeah, yeah. We do more than just fatties. But, um, but you know, it's, a, it's an interesting name that I got. I found out that people call me, so I'll take it. <laughs> is that what they say around town? Is that your yeah. Fanny physio? Yeah, I'm okay, telling the husband. That. I'm just off to see the fanny physio today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so I thought we'd just do a quick wee video on anatomy of pelvic floor and diaphragms so we can get an idea of where things are because a lot of the stuff that we do is actually being like, here yeah, is your muscles, this is what they do, here's the function of it and um, maybe we'll start at your end so people can see that and then come back up to diaphragm or where do you want to go, where do you feel like is the... Yeah, well, I mean, I guess it's important to understand the concept that everything mm. moves at the, at the rhythm of the diaphragm. So when you're talking about the pelvic floor, the diaphragm's always moving up and down. The pelvic floor goes with it. It's always mm. moving up and down. And so when you're talking about the anatomy, here's the pelvis though, prepared earlier, is uh, <laughs> you've, got, <laughs> you've got at the front here, you've got your bladder, your uterus and your ovaries here and your bowel at the back. And they sit in this pelvic cavity. Uh, obviously, for a, for a man, you don't have that. <laughs> You've just got this. But it's, it's the same otherwise for a man and a woman. It sits inside the pelvic, floor, pelvic cavity. And it's, um, they should sit and be well supported by the pelvic floor at the bottom here. So the, the, the pelvic floor is this beautiful, beautiful muscles that, that uh, are, you've got them around the entrance here of the vagina. And around the bottom here, and those exit, those you can see the way those muscles go. They close up, so they mm -hmm. close up to stop uh, poo from coming out and farts. And the same yep. with the the uh, these muscles here, the the ones around the vagina, they close up. So when you cough or you sneeze, those muscles squeeze up to stop you uh, wetting your pants. Okay. And then you've got the deeper layers here, the muscles that come in, they connect into the coccyx right at the back there, the tailbone. the tailbone, and then they come all the way forward to the pubic bone at the front here. So they come all the way forward, and then they go out to either side. They go out to the sit bone, the bony bit mm -hmm. that you should be sitting on, out to the side here, and then out to the other side. And they form this wonderful hammock here that supports the pelvic organs, and those wee muscles in there, they should be, every time you get some pressure coming down, those muscles, like a big strong pressure, those wee muscles should push back up and that's what keeps you dry and supports mm -hmm. your pelvic organs. Um, now, when you, get, when you have to be able to relax those muscles, so when you're doing a poo or when you're having a baby um, yep. or when you're having sex as well, um, those we, those muscles need to be able to relax to be able to accommodate those things. <laughs> so, um, and then they need to come back up to to be in the right position again to to mm -hmm. keep you continent um, and keep your your whole system uh, functioning as a system. So your back muscles, your abdominals here at the front, back coming up the back muscles here, and then the the lid, the diaphragm. <laughs> so yeah. they. Yeah, that's the, that's the basics of the anatomy. They should be, you have the closing muscles and then the lifting up component as well. Um, and the muscles should be able to go through the whole range. Like your biceps, we should be able to, you start at resting level two and then when you mm -hmm. lift up those muscles, like a Kegel, like a pelvic floor lift, you should rise up to level six and then drop back down to level two. And then once you're, if you're having a poo or having a baby, you drop down to level zero and then you come back up to level two. <laughs> yes. I like the like analogies, Lisa. They're so good for people to understand that how it has to work your range. And that there's always, you know, some tone there most of the time with that level two. Yeah. And, and that actually it needs to relax with the, the bowel and bladder because the bowel and bladder habits are so important. We'll talk about that another time because that's like actually those little things that people do are so crucial for actually um, the pelvic floor health. Um, and I love no, the way so that you put, the, put that idea. Oh, sorry, you go. No, no, no. I was just, just going to say, like, so that if they're, if they're too tight, there's a problem. If they're too loose, there's a problem. <laughs> so, and how do people know? Yeah. How do they know if it's too tight or too loose? 
certain things will, will like usually if you're incontinent or you've got some kind of prolapse where the pelvic organs are dropping down um incontinent of bladder or bowel or you feel um your orgasms are not very strong as well yeah. then those muscles are generally a little bit weak um if you are if you've got painful sex problems with tampons back pain hip pain um anything to do like constipation sometimes bladder urgency um then those muscles are generally they sound like they could be too tight um so so there's certain certain things that we would we would think of uh people with too tight muscles can leak too <laughs> so they yeah. can leak bladder and bowels so um so yeah so we know that there's a problem and then we need to figure out why and a lot yeah. of that comes back to the breath always 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 <laughs> Always a breath. It's always the piece, and that's why I love working with you, Lisa. Because as a breathing physio, I see the bottom end not working, so I send them off to you. But I see that people can't that that diaphragm function, which is the the for me, it is the pinnacle of health. If you're not doing that right, it will flow over into so many aspects of your life. Whether it's sleep because you're not able to get that restful state, whether your um, fatigue and energy levels because your um, physiology gets changed with your breathing pattern whether it's mm-hmm. your um, digestive system not working as well because you're taking that blood away from there or you're not using your diaphragm to pump to actually move things around in the gut and health as well and therefore in pelvic floor. So I have all these like symptoms and signs that people experience, but it all the, the root cause can be their breathing pattern and their breathing dysfunction. Um, mm-hmm. And that gets mm-hmm. driven from so many areas too, psychological, physiological, and physical. So again, it's the why behind something that we're all working on. So the diaphragm itself, I love it. I think it's one of the most beautiful big muscles. It's like you probably like the pelvic pelvic floor. Which is <laughs> with you. But diaphragm, I think, is like so misunderstood. It's like the the, the, the um, it's the poor cousin that doesn't get the the headlight. You know, he just doesn't get the the, the spotlight. And it should yeah. because it's like any muscle in the body, it needs to get trained. It needs strengthening. And there's so many times in life when it will get deconditioned. Um, even when you're unwell, illnesses. Um. That can mean that you change your pattern. Um, if you've had pain, your diaphragm can actually become weaker and mm-hmm. it can become weaker on one side. So on your muscles, I might just get up here to show you. And then anyway, so diaphragm starts in that front, right from that sternum and the base through here, the xiphoid, down to the sides and it goes in the dome, so it's a dome on both sides. And then it comes all the way around into your lower back, into your L1, L2 vertebrae and onto the, the actual bodies. And it is a 360 degree muscle. So this bit is like my one where people go, oh, wow. And I'm like, it shouldn't be just this front bit here. And it shouldn't be that you breathe faster, like some of the techniques we're showing to get you feeling good, which can help. But most of your normal breathing pattern, it's about getting that 360 degree activation. And I see the main issue that I see with my back pain patients, my pelvic floor patients that we see, is they're not using that 360. They're often not using that posterior wall. And so they're not getting the stability and they're not getting the um, intra-abdominal pressure and the, the actual, actual oxygen carbon dioxide balance right. So there's lots of things it impacts on too. And it's actually the thing for the diaphragm is it's a one-way muscle. So it, while it still works, would you like control back up slowly? And the, really the important part is actually how you inhale, activating it. But the exhale is the most important. It shouldn't be forced out. Okay. And this is why I show you, hopefully you can see it with the light there. This is my little E6 from science experiment. So when you are breathing in, you, your diaphragm, that dome, actually draws down and it flattens a bit. So it's, then it rests back up and it comes into that dome position. So when you breathe in, the ear gets drawn to lungs by the change in that diaphragm position. So if you're not actually using that diaphragm to drop down, you don't get the pressure in that core cylinder, which will mean the pelvic floor begins to work against it and control. And you'll also mean you're not getting the oxygen into the right areas, into your alveoli and into your lungs. So you're actually not mm. going to be as efficient with that as well. So you, again, you kind of your body feels short of breath or you can get symptoms of um, ear hunger because it's not doing the right things. It's not getting the right um, anatomy with it. Yeah. Mm. So um, for me, it's about understanding your anatomy with all this sort of stuff. Once you can imagine it, see it, feel it, experience it, then you can bring it into all your day-to-day habits, things that you're doing that will then um, make it more functional. Because while it's great to take a few breaths and do 10 minutes meditation here and there, that isn't functional and it won't always mean that you can calm yourself in the moment. So it's it's breath on the go, it's breath of movement, it's breath of sex, it's all these things that will help us perform at our optimal um, health and wellness. 
Yeah, 100%. It, it, it has to start with the breath. Like that's the, it, yeah. it's apart from, you know, it's the only thing that's always moving. Well, not the only thing, but, you know, it is always it is well, it should always be always moving. moving. It should be yeah. always moving. But we see people in the clinic where they actually are, it's like almost rigid and it's not moving. Mm. And they're, they're using these other backup breathing muscles and they get all these neck pain, shoulder tension and vocal cord dysfunction, headaches. And it's like, mm. okay, let's bring it back to basic. And it's like, it's a, it's a life-changing moment for many people when they see that. Um, so yeah, 100%. Cool and, and, and when you put your hands on them and you feel that tension through and the tension mm. through the ribs and te- oh, it's just, you can like unlock it and like they go, oh, whoa, I can breathe for the first time. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> it's amazing. It's, absolutely. Yeah. There's so many things that can change that, whether it's fractures, rib fractures, injuries, um, pneumonias, all these conditions. And, and like the baby, too. having a baby that, that just stretches it and brings it like four centimeters wider, I think, the actual rib cage. So often yep. we're actually pushing into different positions. And yes, our diaphragm that. is just not even sitting, like it's, it's already up and elevated. So we get stuck in this, well, we're breathing ball, in this expanded position. And it's like, then mm-hmm. we don't realize that pattern stuck there. And we actually need to learn to exhale and drop it down to get that diaphragm to do its job. So exactly. it's a lot of consequences from it. And the, the initial point is understanding your own breathing pattern, what you're doing and how you can change it. Because it is different for everybody. Mm-hmm. and it's changeable you can change it yeah yep. and you can strengthen it you can condition it you can make it so that all these aspects of your life are fun and enjoyable from there that's so, right that's right i hope that gives people a bit of a taster a little moose bouche a little wee um taste of what the anatomy is for your core and um and to changing the way that we think about it because it's not just about these big abdominal muscles they'll come on when they need to come on but they're not meant to be bracing gripping holding and rigidity through there we're meant to flow and move and Rock exactly. around and feel good through there. Yeah. That's it. The move for the rest of the team. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, Lisa. I think that will be it for our We Anatomy Boost. And hopefully, people can comment or subscribe or talk about this to other people and actually start the conversation behind um, how our pelvic floor, our core, and our health are all interlinked.